Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock to determine whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios of the company. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at is Broadridge Financial Solutions, founded in 2007 as a spin off from automatic data processing. It is a service provider supplying public companies with proxy statements annual reports and other financial documents and shareholder communication solutions such as virtual annual meetings. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 15 spot $8 billion. So it's a large cap company. Let's see what they're trading at. 137.36 a share. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm pulling in their actual free cash flow, which is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. We also need the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement, and also the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. We also want to take a look at the numbers to make sure they look okay. Everything's really consistent and positive, so we should get a good value for this company. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 62 million of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. Current debt of 400 million. That's debt due within 12 months. Long-term debt of 1.4 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay 3.5% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. Income before tax of 580 million. Income tax is 117 million. 20% in taxes they pay. Cost of debt is 2.8%. Let's get the beta to figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. Beta of 0.88, so the stock moves less than the market. Let's get their current assets. We have to go back to the balance sheet for that. And they have 1.3 billion of current assets. Let's see what that is. 291 million of cash, 711 million of net receivables. That's how much money others owe this company. And 140 million of other. Let's get the current liabilities, 1.3 billion. And that's 400 million of current debt, 151 million of accounts payable. That's how much they owe other companies. 168 million of accrued liabilities. Accrued liabilities are expenses a company incurs but it hasn't paid yet, such as payroll and payroll taxes. 156 million of deferred revenue. So when you receive payment for a product or service but you haven't delivered it yet, you book it into the deferred revenue. But when you actually deliver a product or service, then you pull it off of deferred revenue and put it into revenue on the income statement. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 1.4 billion. That's 1.6 million of common stock. 2.3 billion of retained earnings. Retained earnings is your past net incomes minus your past dividends. So they're operating profitably. Negative 100 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's get their operating income. That's 625 million. And now let's look at the capital structure. 57% debt, cost of debt 2.8%, 43% equity, cost of equity 9.1%, and the WAC is 5.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company $11.7 billion. We divide that by 115 million shares, and we come up with a calculated stock price of 102. It's trading at 137, so it's trading at 35% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at 110. So they're also saying the stock is a sell. They're a little higher than me. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So from 2015 to 2018, it looks like it was a great stock to own because it looked like it hit its peak then. Then it dropped a bit, then it came back up, then in coronavirus it dropped again, but it looks like it's at its all-time high. 
So I'm not sure if it's a good value. It just really depends on how you feel the future of the company is going to be. Let's look at our financial ratios. Not such a good price to earnings, price to sales, or price to book. Price to earnings is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, there are 34. So investors are paying $34 for $1 of net income. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, there are 3.5. So investors are paying $3.50 for $1 of sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 11.7. So investors are paying about $12 for $1 of book value. They have a good current ratio, ROE, and interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. So they could almost cover their current liabilities, but this doesn't seem like too much of a problem. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 34%. So they provide a great value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 10, so they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Accenture, Fleet Corps, IBM, Scientific Applications, Wipro, and Xerox, all in the same industry as Broadridge. And if Broadridge has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So in terms of price to earnings, price to sales, price to book and current ratio, they're worse than the average in the industry. Xerox is doing really well in those categories. ROE, they are better than the average. The average is 28%, they're at 34%. IBM is the best. In terms of debt, they're a little worse than the average. Average is 43%, they're at 57%. So they're not too leveraged. In terms of market cap, they're at 15.8 billion, which is not small at all, but the average is 44 billion because there's some really big companies in this industry. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.